What's up guys? Thanks for coming back to the channel. Today we have got a brand new video. We are starting a brand new unit of work. A bit of a dreaded unit, but we should not dread it. This is a fun and exciting and interesting unit of work. We are starting our work on algebra, okay? Now, today we're gonna to be looking at the basics of algebra, just an introduction to it to understand what we need to learn before we can move on to solving equations and things like that, okay? So we're looking at basic algebra today and the fundamentals that we need to learn before we can explore it too much further. Okay, let's check it out. Okay, so the very first thing you need to understand is that algebra is very similar to arithmetic. It uses the same four operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. But algebra introduces a brand new aspect, and that is the aspect of the unknown. When you are first looking at arithmetic, the only area that's unknown is the answer. So if we look at a very basic one, five add 10 equals unknown. The answer is not known until we go ahead and complete our question. A very important difference straight away between arithmetic and algebra is when we have an unknown in algebra, we use a symbol, okay? Now a very common symbol to be used would be X, X but you can pretty much use any letter of the alphabet. X, Y, A and B tend to be the four main ones used, but you can use any letter. So in arithmetic, we would leave it as this, five plus 10 equals unknown. In algebra, we would have five add 10 equals X. The X in this case is a placeholder and it stands for the number that we have not got the answer for yet. So what we have created is a very basic algebraic equation. An equation is just a mathematical term, meaning both things are equal. Both things on either side of the equal sign are equal. So it is saying that everything on this side of the equal sign has the same value as everything on this side of the equal sign. So in this example, the equation is telling us that what's on this side, 5 add 10, the known value, has the same value as what's on this side, which is the unknown value that we are going to call x. One of the main aims in algebra is to solve equations finding out the unknown value, in this case, x. In this example, it's pretty easy to see that we have got 15. Five add 10 is 15. And all we need to do is add five to 10, gives us 15. Therefore, 15 equals x, which is the same as saying x equals 15. Now, this is an extremely easy example of anything to do with algebra. And that is why when you often see algebraic equations, they are a lot harder. And you might be given a much harder example like this. If we had x minus 10 equals five, that is the exact same equation as if we had five add 10 equals x, but it's not quite as easy to tell what x is. So you could look at algebra like a game. You will be given big algebraic equations that it's your job to solve, simplify, and find the value of the unknown values. And we are gonna learn a lot more about actually solving equations in future videos. So make sure at this point you like and subscribe to the channel to not miss that. But for now, let's learn some very important rules about how symbols can and cannot be used in equations. So the very first rule you need to know is that different symbols or different letters can be used in different problems to represent different values. So for example, in the problem we just solved, the, the letter X was used to represent the number 15. But X could stand for a different value in a different problem. For example, if someone asked us to solve five add X equals 10, the value of the x in this case is five, because in order for the two sides of this equation to be equal, five would have to add to another five to equal 10. So x or any other symbol can stand for different unknown values in different problems. That's fine. But what is not fine is letters cannot stand for different values in the same problem. 
For example, if we had the expression x add x equals 10, the equation is saying if we add x to x, we get 10. There are a lot of different ways that we can get 10 with two digits. We could add 9 to 1, 8 to 2, 7 to 3, and so on. But let's say we represented it as 6 add 4 equals 10. That means the first x, that value is 6. And the second x, that value is 4. This is not okay. This means that different x's would have different values through an equation. And that would become very problematic. So that's not okay. So if you did need to represent two different values in an equation at the same time, you would need to use two different symbols. And that's why we often see x and y. So if you ever see a really long algebraic equation like this one with lots of x values, all those x values have the same value. Okay, so we know that we cannot have the same letter representing two different numbers. But what about the other way around? Can one number be represented by two letters? Yes, we can. And here's a good example. Let's say we have the equation a plus b equals 2. Now, a could have the value of 0 and b could have the value of 2. Or a could have the value of 1 and b could have the value of 1. Or a could have the value of 2 and b could have the value of 0. So in this example, even though a and b are different symbols, they are holding the same value. There will be times where they just happen to represent the same value. And that brings on to something else that's really important. Did you notice that each symbol could be represented with a different value, depending on what the other symbol was representing? For example, if a is 0, then b has to be 2. If a is 1, then b has to be 1. And if a is 2, then b has to be 0, in order for the equation to be balanced and to be equal. So a symbol's value can change depending on what the other symbol's values are doing. And this means that it is variable. These symbols are variables. Their value can change depending on what else is happening around them. So in this example, both A and B are both variables because they can both change, their values can both change depending on what the other one is doing. So it's really common in algebra to refer to all letters and all symbols as variables. Okay, so what have we learned so far? We've learned that algebra is very similar to arithmetic. It uses the same four processes, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. But we've also learned that algebra has an unknown value that can be replaced by a symbol. And we often see X and Y and A and B being used the most. But there is one more thing that's really important that I wanna teach you on this video, and it has to do with multiplication. Here are the four basic arithmetic problems. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Although in algebra, you will see division being represented in its fraction form. In arithmetic, all four of these operations will have the same statue. They are the same importance. However, in algebra, we have a king. Our multiplication is the king. It gets some special treatment. And that's because in algebra, multiplication is the go-to, the standard, the default operation. If you don't see a symbol, you are going to multiply. So therefore, if there are no other arithmetic processes shown between two symbols, we are going to multiply. So for example, instead of writing A times B, we can just write AB. And we know that multiplication is implied. Another key word for us. Of course, in this example, we can't actually multiply A and B until we know what values they are. The advantages of this is that it makes a lot of algebraic equations a lot less cluttered and a lot smaller, and you're a lot less likely to make mistakes confusing sometimes X symbol with X the process. So for example, instead of having A times B plus X times Y, we can have AB plus XY. Now this rule doesn't just apply when it's two symbols, it is also implied when it's a quantity and a symbol. For example, we don't need to write two times x, we can just write two x. Because there's no other process between them, we are gonna imply and we are gonna assume it is multiplication. However, we can't use it for just two numbers, two quantities, because if we wanted to show two times five and we move the times symbol out, it would show 25. And 25 is not the same as saying 2 times 5. So if we're putting two quantities together, we will still see that multiplication sign. 
but it will still be the case if we are using parentheses or brackets. If we see two pairs of brackets or two parentheses next to each other, without a symbol, we are going to times them. We're going to multiply the values inside each set of parentheses. For example, if we saw this with a plus b in a bracket and x plus y in a bracket, with no other symbol between them, we know that we are multiplying the a plus b times x plus y. So technically, what we could do, going back to our 2 times 5, is we could put them in brackets, in parentheses. Therefore, this cannot be confused with the number 25, and we know because there's nothing between them that multiplication is implied. So we would times 2 times 5. Or, if we wanted to, because putting two separate individual things in brackets does look a bit strange in maths, we could put one digit in parentheses and leave one out. Again, multiplication is implied because there's no other symbol between it. So we would still do 2 times 5. Okay, so we have learned that Algebra is very similar to arithmetic, but we have unknown values that we need to solve the equation to get to. We've also learned that in algebra, the multiplication sign is king, and if there's no other sign there, we are going to use that as our default. Now, I know what you're thinking, is algebra useful? Why am I learning this? And the answer is yes, they are hugely important. And that's very difficult to see when you're just looking at a bunch of numbers and letters on a page. But when they become very obvious and very helpful is when we start to graph these equations. For example, there is a whole group of algebraic equations that are called linear equations. And that is because they create a straight line across a graph. Those kind of equations are really helpful to tell you the slope of a ramp or how long it's going to take to get somewhere or do something. Another class called quadratic equations can be used to design telescope lenses or to describe a trajectory of a ball that's thrown or predict the growth of population. So algebra is used all the time in fields like science and engineering and other forms of mathematical careers. And if you ever wanted to set up your own business, you would use algebraic equations to work out your profits and work out your potential profits. So this is a really interesting and exciting avenue of maths. Guys, thanks for watching. Check out our next video to be begin solving algebraic equations. But for now, like and subscribe to this channel, please. It's really helpful. Maths hero, gone.